Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going back a little bit, about three weeks ago, when I posted a video called It's Worse Than You Think. Now, this video was in reference to another where I exposed pawn CNC's issues with quality dealing with their spindle cables. Please do a search. I'll put a link in the video description. You can check out that video. This one will make more sense then. But as we come down here, I am still getting messages regarding pawn CNC spindles one of which came in a day ago and it says i ordered the pawn cnc spindle kit on 831.25 and installed on my cnc that i'm getting going i verified that my cable has no shielding at all based on my limited amount that i've learned from your channel so far i've only learned of your channel a couple weeks ago and that's a shame because i think it would have helped him really understand what he's purchasing not really sure what to look for in the VFD wiring. I've opened it up, but haven't touched anything. Really great information, Vince, thank you. Well, here's where it gets interesting. I told him, please forward me pictures of the cable. I have my email in the video's description. I'll let you know what I find. Thank you for your support. And he did. So now you guys get to see if and what this gentleman received. Now, the thing to keep in mind is when I heard he had no shielding in his cable, that made me draw a red flag because I'm thinking, look, maybe the shield drain isn't connected. That's exactly what we saw in the previous videos. But the cables themselves did have shields. Well, here's where things get interesting. It says here, good afternoon, Vince. I'm the guy that posted a comment last night about the pawn CNC spindle cables. And it says right there that matches the uh, user on YouTube. Uh, after learning about your channel a couple weeks ago and seeing issues with pawn CNC spindle cables, I decided to check it out for myself. I purchased the system on 831.25 and installed it on my CNC that I'm building and getting going. From what I've learned so far, your channel, it seems, and he's basically reiterating exactly what he said. Here are some photos I took last night. I took apart some of the VFD as well, but I didn't touch anything other than that. Not sure too much the or not sure how much these photos will help. I'll be happy to take and send any other photos as well. Love your channel. Look forward to diving deeper into learning more. Thank you. Thank you as well, sir. Coming over here is where things get interesting because, like I said, when I hear a cable doesn't have shielding, and we say no shielding, nothing at all, that drew a red flag to me. I'm thinking, well, maybe this gentleman just isn't aware of where to look for the shields. Maybe it's just got to be, you know, he just didn't find it. And then when I seen these pictures, we covered some things in detail, and this is going to shock many of you. So we come in here, and I'm just going to go through these real quick. First thing to notice, you see this casing right here on one of the leads going into the spindle connector, and this is soldered on, of course. In order for us to see what's going on underneath here, he would have to remove the heat shrink. I wouldn't recommend him to do that. Um, but you can see right here, this lead definitely has heat degradation. You can see some warping going on, and you can see how the texture changes. This is where we have some heat damage starting to happen, and up here, this is where this lead is correct. And you can see smooth finish, and we're getting like a textured ripley finish so just keep this in mind as we go through things so then we go to the next one and this is a very interesting picture because this is the cable and there's the leads and you notice there's nothing here there's no the boot is down here we can see that right here this is a silicone boot that comes with the hy large connector and then this is the cable but we see nothing here so I'm thinking maybe the shields are underneath this, like many other people. Maybe they did the job correctly and used probes and pushed it down and made sure it was properly insulated. Let's see. So as we go through, now we can see he's exposed by cutting the cable's casing. And you can see right here what looks more or less like a tire's tread pattern. That is the molding that happens internally from the leads and whatever else is installed in the cable. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what you are seeing. You notice there is no shield present. I'm not making this up. You can see it. We see that we've got the texture present on the casing. We can see here we have the yarn or fibrous material coming out of the cable, which instigates that the cable is a high flex cable, but without shielding. And I say double shielding, once again, a tin braided copper and a mylar foil to mitigate both forms of EMI, you essentially have 
nothing to mitigate EMI. This is a standard cable. This gentleman was absolutely correct. And there is no way in hell you would have shielding underneath this mass of fiber, meaning it's impossible to just move the shielding down with not affecting this fiber. You can see how much of it is coming out of the cable. This is something I told him to immediately contact Pawn and also his payment processor if they're not being receptive in order to find out what's going on. Now, as we come through here, again, we can see the same imaging, and this is in previous videos as well, is how the unit is wired inside. Again, this is a 3D printed enclosure. I'm not going to get into that. We can see his IEC here for power input is also 3D printed, which I've never seen done, but that's what we're seeing right there. You can definitely see the texture right there. Moving forward, as we come in, where you can see, once again, this is their enclosure cover. Here's where things get really interesting now. This. And I want you to pay close attention here. You notice that the cabling here does have shielding. Matter of fact, it's got shielding and it's not done properly. For this should units, be pushed beneath the cable's casing for safety because this is a ground. It is shield material. So with that being exposed like that, I mean, we're going to get into these connectors here, but with that being exposed like that, you definitely have a safety hazard. Okay, and we also have it right here. You can see that as well. And just to reiterate, you can see this is definitely pawn CNC right here. Okay. I have no idea why they would use piece together cables here that are shielded, yet the cable that he ran to his spindle is not. And we can see that right here. And this is exactly what you would see on a shielded cable in that when the casing is removed, you would see the shields present upon any casing removed because when cables are made in rolls, the shielding is applied at the second it's made, meaning from the beginning of the roll to the end, end to end, it is installed. Now a shield drain may sneak back a little bit on one end or the other. It's just depending on tension. I see that done all the time. When I say a little bit, I'm talking maybe three millimeters, four millimeters to see no. Hey guys, jump over to eDealers Direct Automation and check out my eBay store for the components used to make what you see in this video, as well as many others that you may not even realize you need. Of course, I'm always there if you have questions, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And of course, I do do custom engineering as well as consultations. Thank you for watching this video and your support. Take care. Shielding there at all, this is something I have never seen okay unless that cable is not shielded so again guys we have some issues okay now let's address the elephant in the room we've got for rules that I don't know what to make of this now here's where things get interesting I spoke to the gentleman and I'm gonna show you his response but you can see right here these are not at all installed correctly as a matter of fact they don't even look like they're installed at all he claims he just remove the VFD's enclosure and this is what he found and he has used the VFD and spindle everything is working now you're going to notice some things really interesting but if we look right here you could see a for rule that's damaged you could see it's pinched right here this one should not have been at all used we also see a jumper which I've never seen where we have a lead going into one terminal block another lead actually sitting outside of it I mean this is totally unorthodox. It's not best practice. These terminal blocks on BFDs are designed for single terminals only, meaning a single for rule or a single lead. You should not be doing this. And if you do have to jump a lead to the same terminal, you would use a terminal splitter. That's best practice. What we see here, and you can see this is all the way through. My immediate assumption was these for rules were not installed at all. The gentleman said that the unit works. That being said, Yes, sir, did not touch any of the wiring. The cable should be replaced immediately and I would contact your payment processor first to let them know what happened and then attempt to contact Pawn to see how they respond. Okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, naturally I'm asking him, all the for rules in the pictures below were this far out of the VFD's terminals when you removed the VFD enclosure. And you can see I circled them and I'm letting them see it right here. Response, yes, sir, did not touch any of the wiring. Okay. This is terrifying. There is no way to explain this other than that. This is why I said to you guys, 
this is worse than you think. If you're selling in mass quantities and you're not doing quality control, this can bite you, but it gets deeper. I also let this gentleman know that you could see right here, once again, that shield needs to be insulated. Now, in best practice, I use probes to push the shield beneath the cable's casing. That's best practice, so that the cable's casing does what it's meant to do, insulate that shield. Now, another option would be to utilize double wool heat shrink with adhesive. Why do I say double wool heat shrink with adhesive? Adhesive will lock the heat shrink in place and double wool mitigates a thinner wool. So we'll have a much more durable holding piece. And of course, something like this, you don't wanna cut corners on because it's safety. I mean, this is just blatant disregard for safety and what we're seeing here. God forbid any of that ground material hits any of these conductors, which once again, I still can't believe how far they're not installed in the terminal block. To me, I didn't even think they were installed like many of you. So looking at this is something that really has to be seen to be understood. And I'm still getting messages on this. And I'm telling you all now, anyone who's received a cable that looks like the gentleman's here or is missing a shield drain being attached, you do not have a proper cable. You should be contacting this company, seeing how they take care of things, and if they don't step in, contact your payment processor. This is bigger than you, believe me it is, if this gentleman has been selling in the quantities he claims to be. Because I guarantee you, this is not ending. The more and more guys check their equipment, they're gonna find this. And I'm telling you right now, this is not a pretty thing to fix on a manufacturer's end. So again, I hope this video has helped. I hope you guys are getting smarter to what you do with your money. It's always better to search and do your due diligence before running into issues like this.